welcome back to my channel now this is the part two of my reaction and movie therapy to therapies react to one division so this second part is entitled of lies loss and the house of misery so we'll go deeper into the relationship of wanda and vision towards to her maladaptive daydreaming stage and totally uh, going through the different stages of grief so let's begin they were both cast in age of ultron but they don't have a lot of time together or any time together in that film i don't think there's hardly any time but the entire wanda and vision love story at least from the films is that's russo brothers yeah. Yeah. they're so beautiful i think because they're both so like softly strong there's something yeah. magical about vision's my favorite character yeah by far just because of how deeply kind he is and patient yeah. and i think she you know wanda needs that it's like yeah. the perfect pairing i don't know it's beautiful now of course like you're talking katie there there's their quiet strength is so beautiful this chemistry is so beautiful and as many great filmmakers do and actors do, they set up a beautiful love story so they can completely kick us in the crotch. <laughs> no. So painful. It's not fair. It shouldn't be you, but it is. It's just about to destroy me here. God, that's so devastating. So I hated watching that. So, Check it out. Agnes later sums it up. So to recap, parents dead, brother dead, vision dead. The, the sheer amount of loss that Wanda's gone through, and so much of that happened right before her eyes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. In order to form healthy, happy memories that we can store and that we can recall and that we can let go of, we have to be able to put them into a cohesive narrative and file it away. And we know that trauma memories, we're not able to do that. Again, like we talked earlier about like dissociation, maladaptive daydreaming, that ripcord. If we're not present, we can't put it into a story. And it's almost like, I love Inside Out, that Pixar film. Mm -hmm. yeah. And imagine those marbles, instead of them being formed and filed away so neatly, they're dropped on the floor of that like control center and there's yeah. splinters everywhere. And I feel like each time we see, you know, we personally, or even if we're talking specifically to Wanda, each time something like that happens, a marble's dropped and she's just trying to pick up the splinters or stepping on them, having flashbacks, right? It, it can feel very overwhelming to our system. Uh, trauma can be really debilitating and really overwhelming to our nervous system, make it difficult for us to connect with other people. But because I'm a therapist, I just have to say this, with the right support and the right help, we can put those marbles back together we can roll them away and we can feel better and overcome it but it's it's difficult and yeah. very uncomfortable at times and it's you know i i think of the power of art because we can experience things vicariously we can go through a journey with the characters they spent so much time building characters across the mcu that when something like this happens i'm not going to say it's even close to losing someone you actually care no. about but there were many people who experienced it as I think a minor trauma may not be may not be overselling it, you know that that they just like what just happened because the characters have come to mean and represent so much to them, and so what's beautiful about what we're going to explore now, is we get an entire grief arc to experience vicariously watching the MCU and WandaVision, to experience through pop culture at least a a reflection or a type of. This is what it's like to move through trauma, to move through grief to a place of peace. But Wanda's not there yet. Uh, so she gets dusted like so, like half of us got dusted. And then she gets snapped back, what? <laughs> I just that's a that's a comment. Did you get dusted or were you a remainer? Yeah, right. So she gets I dusted. dusted. I don't want to go, Mr. Decker. I don't want to go. Then she gets uh, snapped back into existence and she deals with her grief. He didn't see that coming. The way a lot of people do, the way she did when Pietro died and now she deals with it with just destructive rage and fury. Yeah. Right? And we really get to see her power when she goes off against Thanos. Anger. You took everything from me. Or for other circumstances, like he had to call in the big guns because she would have beaten Thanos, which is something. Yeah. And I love that her power is red too. 
I mean, it always has been. It's not like this is a change, but the rage that she feels, it's so, like, red's always been a color I personally, like, attach to anger or rage. Yeah. And I think it's so, it's so powerful when she goes on this, like, tear to both parts terrifying and beautiful. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. No, I think that sums up Wanda in general, terrifying and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I, and I don't just mean like looks. I mean like she's a beautiful character, mm -hmm. and she's also terrifying. Now she's back. Battles won. She goes to reclaim Vision's body, but I am so heartbroken because the whole "I just feel you" that's repeated twice in Infinity War, mm -hmm. when she's with his body. I can't feel you. Trying to not trying to not cry. Yeah. And it's escaping out is so so realistic, good. and then she finally gives yeah. into it. Creating a new reality, right? One where she can be happy, one where things can be different. Yeah. And of course, and of course, we explore it here in fantasy. She's got the power of creation. Yeah. I would love to be like that. I mean, to just let it all out because sometimes it is really um, overwhelming. Uh, visually, it's great because it respect well not really just respect but if you're familiar with the comic book of house of m it's like those puzzle pieces that's exactly how it looks like it's like the comics house of m um but of course it was also good like visually because it's a shows a deeper meaning like she's trying to um she's trying yeah literally trying to create with her own building blocks from, from all her pain so that's that is now I, I understood how maladaptive the dream is connected with this and I could relate and there are times that I just do that too where I just would cry all of a sudden I would just cry just let it all out because sometimes it's overwhelming but something is so hard uh, to be okay when you're not okay my dad died last year, so it's still hard for me. There are times when I just simply cry. Um, so I wish I could do that like, the way one did just explode. I wish I, I love that uh, scene very much because it's something that I wish I could do in real life. Just want to be. I just want to explode. How do you see this comparing to reality? I mean, I, I honestly think that it is very comparable. I, I've heard from a lot of my audience members and, and even my patients alike that when they create these daydreams, it's, you know, if we're talking about maladaptive daydream, when they create them, they're very lifelike. Uh, it's, it's usually tethered to reality a little bit more closely, but not for everybody. Again, everybody's different, but I think it's, other than the time jump, I think it's very representative. And the fact that it's a sitcom, most people, their, their daydreams are, it's like, first per you know you are it's in like it. real life it, this is happening this is reality yeah for next week here's our teaser video of the line what is grief if not love persevering because mm -hmm. i realized that my sorrow is it means they mattered it means what we had was real yeah. and it's because of actually one of one of the reasons why i love what the vision is because of this line because um all my life, I've always been afraid to lose my family. So I've already lost them lots of times. We were farmed out when we were young. And so already, every time my dad leaves for the country, I always cry. Last year, when he died, my greatest fear came to pass. 